hello everyone, I'm Juanita, I'm part of Spire's team, and I want to welcome all of you to this Spirecast that we've created for you to talk to the team and ask questions um, you have regarding Spire or any other things you want to ask the team. Um, so we have today um, Carlos, our lead maintainer, Gonzalo, um, and Daniel, um, core developers, and Brian and Cam, who are um, part of the volunteer developers team, and me, who um, I'm part of also the developers team and currently um, serve the community manager, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So, Carlos. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, we're very well, we're very glad that uh, you're here participating in this event. And uh, we, we really hope that you enjoy this time with us. Um, we plan to share um, what I've been working on and especially to introduce the several members of our team. There are some volunteers here and, and, and others that most of us are working for Quantsite right now. And uh, yeah, um, uh, let's, let's make this a, a great event. Okay, Gonzalo, did you care to introduce yourself? Hey, uh, hi, I'm Gonzalo. Uh, I'm part of the core developer team of Spider. I've uh, been working with Spider for the past four or five years. Uh, two of those as a volunteer and three of those, you know, like four of those as a volunteer and one year actually for full-time working on it. Uh, currently, I'm working on improving the API for plugin extension with Spider, and I'll tell you more about it later on. Hello. Okay, Daniel. Uh, yeah, um, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Albit. I am currently working also through Quantsight in Spider. Uh, in, as part of the core development team. I have been working on Spider since 15, 2016, more or less three years. Um, and I'm mostly like uh, working uh, in book fixing, basically. Uh, since the, the release for uh, the four versions of Spider, a lot of things to, to work on and um, yeah glad to be here okay um your turn cam how's it going i'm cam gerlach um i uh i've been with the, the spider i was invited to join the spider core team back in uh in 2017 as a volunteer uh in the very end of uh, 2017 and um, I worked on, I helped, I helped a lot of users on the issue tracker and I worked on all the documentation and the grants and the blogs and a lot of the writing, the, a lot of the non-dev stuff as well as helping fix a lot of bugs and make a lot of minor improvements. Um, and, uh, and right now uh, I'm working on, um, the, uh, I'm helping advise a project on, the, uh, on Spider's new documentation for Spider 4 as well as some cool tutorial videos that hopefully you guys will all see to, Show you show you some of the new features in Spider and help you learn to use it better for your own code. Thank you for having me. Okay, um, Brian. Hi, I'm Brian Olson. I've uh, been working with Spider. Well, I've been working as part of the Spider team for for a couple of years. Um, I work mostly on things like the the outliner and other user facing. Um, troubles people are having. I uh, just work as a volunteer and uh, my full-time job is at the University of Alberta. I work at the uh, work with nanotechnology as a materials chemist and I use Spider all the time. So we've published a couple of papers and uh, with solar cells and batteries and mostly doing all the data analysis for all the experiments. And yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you all. So this is the team we're gonna have today. Um, so hopefully you can ask us questions. Um, I mean, uh, we're having our life in Facebook, so you can just put your comments on the chat um, on the event. Um, 
And now, I mean, yeah, I would like uh, all of us to answer um, this question uh, so we can kind of start this live session. So, uh, but Juanita, yes. we are missing your introduction. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I'm Juanita. Uh, um, I'm part of um, Spider Developers, and um, I've been working in Spider for about a year and a half. Um, and I, well, currently I'm working on a project um, kind of improving the documentation for Spider. So, hopefully, you'll get to see that soon. Um, and I'm, I'm also in charge of the social media. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> and that's it. Um, okay, so now the question. Um, so what is the thing that you like the most about working at Spider? So we can start with Carlos again. Okay. Um, well, I, I forgot also to introduce myself, but probably most of, most of you know me already. Um, I am I'm Carlos Cordova. I'm the maintainer of the Spider project. I have been doing this job since um, 2013, mid 2013. I joined the project in 2010. Um, I have been, um, I mean, I like the project a lot uh, when I found it. I, before I worked with, uh, with C++ and uh, also with, uh, with Python a little bit, but I wanted to find an environment that was just like a spider. Unfortunately, Pierre Raybaud, the, um, the creator of a spider, uh, developed um, this, this great project. And I, as almost as, as four, three or four months after I found it, I started to contribute to it. And I, well, if if you knew Spider from those days, we we hosted our code on Google Code, which doesn't exist anymore. And I managed to create a simple web page using the wiki there. That was my my second contribution. My first one was the, the help. Um, the 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 way that that the help pane um, shows doc strings using stings in the, as a web page that was my first contribution it took me like a month to do it it was a lot of work i almost threw the towel during the process and um, regarding the question i really like to work in the spider because i want an environment like a spider and an environment uh, an ide that's specifically specifically focused on scientific computing and that is also developed by scientists and, enge and engineers. So I, my background is in physics. I have, I have a, a bachelor and a master's degree in physics. Now, right now I'm trying to finish uh, um, a PhD in industrial engineering. And I, I work with Mathematica a, a lot of years, like uh, for five, five or six years. I did my undergrad thesis with Mathematica. And then I, I really like it. Uh, I like the, the integrated uh, aspect of it. Um, but uh, after working with C++ especially, I, I prefer to, to do my job in IDEs instead of in the notebook interface. And uh, fortunately also, I met with uh, Fernando Perez in, um, in 2010. And he was a great influence on my professional career. We had a very brief encounter, but still, I appreciate it a lot, and uh, thanks to, to to his influence, I I started to contribute to Scientific Python in 2010, as I said, and I, I have been doing it since. I really was not expecting to become a maintainer. It's way more uh, more work than I expected, and uh, I, probably no one knows the the amount of work that maintainers have to do to to keep. Uh, projects um, alive and and also um, interesting for users, but uh, I'm I'm still doing it every day and I like it a lot. And especially now that I'm part of Quantsite, thanks to Travis Oliphant. Um, I mean, and I'm being paid to do this. I'm really happy with with doing this. Thank you, Carlos. Um, okay, Gonzalo. So, what's what you like the most about working with Spider? Hey, so yeah, I'll, I'll just give a brief uh, overview of how I entered working with Spider and probably that will round out my, my answer. So I'm a civil engineer by trade. I mostly work uh, with water resources and sanitation and 
and hydrology and all that. And at some point I was doing a PhD in the Netherlands and I was using a lot of tools for, for working in my master thesis that were Python related. That was my first encounter with Python. And I felt the need to give back to, the, to this language and to this community that was so open and friendly during the time I was using it. So I started looking for projects. At that time, I wasn't using a spider. Actually, some friends of mine were using it. So they told me about it. And I started looking about projects I could contribute it. And I saw that Carlos, well, that was the maintainer, was Colombian. And I said, hey, maybe I can join this project because there is a fellow Colombian in there. And, and that's basically how I started working with it. And then I started using it more for my personal projects in civil engineer. And coming back to now, like what I've enjoyed the most working with Spider all these years is I get to use the, a language that I really enjoy using. And I use it for most of my personal projects and work projects, which is Python, of course. And basically the idea to be able to, to shape an IDE uh, to do the things that you need to do on your work or the things that people ask you to do, I find it, I find the process very refreshing, finding out ways how to, to get something that works as someone expects. So yeah, so basically the aspect of creation, it's what I enjoy the most. And during this process, seeing the project evolve, like little by little, like, uh, like Carlos said, like at the beginning it was hosted at Google code. At that time, I didn't make a contribution uh, later on, it moved to Bitbucket, and I think I did my first or tried to do my first contribution over there. And finally, we moved to GitHub because it was a platform where all these scientific projects in the Python world and many other projects in the world were moving and getting a lot of traction. So, so seeing the project evolve and being part of that, it's, it's, really, it's really a lot of fun. And uh, so, yeah, I'm... I'm still enjoying the process a lot. I get to work with very talented programmers and learn a lot. As I said, I'm not, uh, let's say, a, a computer scientist or a software engineer by trade. It's something that I just landed to after working too much with coding, I guess. So yeah, that's kind of like what I enjoy. And cheers. Thank you, Gonzalo. Um, Daniel? What's what you like the most about working with Spider? Yeah, well, um, about, about that, I, I mean, probably I will say that it's partially, uh, but it has been like partially like a place where I can learn a lot. When I started like contributing with to, to Spider, when like Carlos contacted me, uh, I didn't know more, much about like the project or even the language Python. Uh, and yeah, it has been like this opportunity to learn uh, and to uh, be able to to also like to interact with, with a community in some sort of sense and help be helpful to others. Uh, and yeah, and I really, and uh, like uh, like this uh, way of development of software in the sense of open source and um, yeah i mean just just to keep simple things I, I like to help to to be helpful and and yeah sometimes like um uh, seen or, or stuff like that seems like uh, the the most enjoyable like kind of uh, program for me, I guess, to have a problem and fix it. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, something like, like, like that. Mm. Thank you. OK, Cam? Yeah, so I guess since others have been sharing a little bit about their background and how they got into Spider and what, what got them into it and then why they do it now, I guess I'll do the same. So I'm actually a, a currently a NASA, a NASA funded researcher uh, here in the US. And um, I've been working on a number of projects in atmospheric science and machine learning and uh, IoT and neural networks. Um, and I, uh, I started getting into Python in 2017 um, for a project I was working on. And 
and I quickly found Spider. I was like, well, what's out there? Spider. And uh, I started helping users on the issue tracker pretty soon because um, they had similar problems that I had. And I, I was like, oh, you know, let me just lend a hand here. They're awesome, you know, great community, amazing software, um, a lot of cool features, some things I wanted to add, but I wasn't quite at that point yet because I was still learning Python. Um, and then Carlos uh, saw that and um, invited me to become a part of the core team. And so then I, uh, I started being more involved. But what What's really cool about Spider for me is, um, is it's not just the the software and the IDE and getting to you know, um, getting getting to, to contribute um, to that and make it better for myself, but it's the whole global international community of uh, perhaps hundreds of thousands of people who use Spider around the world for all different things. And it was so cool getting to um, being one of the main people managing the issue tracker along with Carlos, seeing people um, you know from from uh, from China and India and South America and Europe and. Uh, the Middle East and Africa and all different and all different places around the world um, using Spider and uh, using it for all sorts solving all sorts of problems, and it's like you know you can say oh well this thing might be used by people around the world but like the vast majority of the users were just distributed all over the planet and it was so cool seeing that um, and I guess in the other aspect of the community that was was so cool was um, was the whole Spider Dev team was working in a collaborative environment because uh, a lot of my projects most of my projects I'm like the I, it's, it's a pretty individual thing. Like I give them the task. I was like, oh, right, here's the overall idea. And I, you know, I do all of that. And, um, but uh, I, I really wanted to work in a more collaborative team setting because you need to do so much more when you're working with a team with people with all different strengths. And so I really, really enjoyed that aspect. There were definitely some challenges and I definitely had to work through some stuff, but um, I really appreciated that and it's had a big impact on my life outside of Spider as well. Um, and in a way, I can exert, you know, some of the closest friends with, with Spider, almost part of my Spider family. It was, it was especially a time in my life when I really needed that. So that was a really cool part of it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Cam. Um, okay, Ryan, can you answer the same question for us? Yeah, sure. Um, I've been working with Python for a long time. I uh, wrote my thesis probably about 10 years ago or longer in Python and uh, in Python, using Python. I wrote it in LaTeX, but the whole thing compiled through through Python anyway. Um, but uh, I wasn't really using an IDE, just I was just using a text editor for a long time. Then I found Spider, and uh, the IDE was great. Um, I really like the, the integration that uh, that it had uh, with the variable explorer. I really like the, the console, a great way to look through the data and the plotting. Uh, some of the things I, I really like about working with it is that it's written in Python. Um, so I, I started off Python and open source, and then I'm able to continue to contribute to uh, something a bit bigger just to keep challenging myself and learning how to contribute to a large project and to be able to, to make the commits and testing and uh, patches. Um, it's just a, a really interesting, challenging project. And considering that I write everything in Python anyway, and the IDE is written in Python, it's just really handy. So. OK, thank you, Brian. Um, OK, I, I guess I'll answer the question myself. Um, I think what I like the most about working with Spire, um, well, first off is I think the challenge. Um, yeah, as, as Gonzalo, I'm not a software engineer or a computer scientist. I'm a mathematician. So, um, yeah, my, my previous knowledge uh, it's qu quite different. But it's been a challenge for me, and I've learned a lot through the process. And I I definitely have um, liked also working with a team and kind of being part of a community that's not only a spider, but um, yeah, the Python open source community. Um, I think that's been great uh, going to conferences and kind of know people that want to help others and work in team and kind of contribute to do something great. I think that's what I like the most um, and what I've yeah, been, um, yeah, why I've stayed here working um, in Spider. Um, okay, so before we, we go to answer um, some questions from our um, users and, and Facebook, I, I want to introduce um, a special guest that will be joining us today, but uh, I want Carlos to to introduce him. So, Carlos. Yeah. So um, this is a guest that has has been working um, with with us uh, for the last year. And he has been very very important uh, for the team or for the work that we have been doing. 
probably not so many of you know about him because he has been working behind the, the I don't know, the curtains. I don't know if that's an expression in English. And, um, but um, I'm, I'm really happy that he's joining today and he's Ralph Gomers. He's uh, the maintainer of uh, NumPy and SciPy. And he's also the director of Quantside Labs. So welcome Ralph today. All right, well, thanks for having me and thanks for, uh, for hosting Juanita and yeah, great to see everyone here. Nice. So Ralph, can you tell us a little bit or, or audience a little bit about uh, the, the work that you have been doing in Quantsite? Uh, sure. Uh, so I'm, I'm directing Quantsite Labs, which is the, um, what we call the non, you know, the public benefit uh, division of Quantsite. Um, that kind of tries to support all the open source projects in the PyData ecosystem. And Spider is one of those. Um, so there's there's lots of people involved in Quantsite Lab at the moment, uh, about 25 maintainers, uh, um, among which uh, six of whom work on Spider, uh, either part-time or full-time. And you know, my role is um, you know, trying to enable those maintainers to, to work on Spider, uh, also to help uh, get funding and, you know, basically supports the team in, in any way that I can. Thanks, Ralph. So for, for the rest of us to know, um, Ralph was really pivotal for, uh, for Spider to find the funding to finish Spider 4. So um, at the end of 2017, me and, and, and my team in Anaconda were let go because of uh, our structure inside the company. So during 2018, we had a, a hard time trying to continue with, with the work. I was doing it uh, voluntarily and Daniel was helping me a little bit. We also um, were very fortunate to get uh, an Unfocus uh, grant scholarship to, to keep working on a spider, but uh, we were uh, in a pretty hard place at the end of 2018. Fortunately, at the beginning of 2019, two companies uh, started um, to contact me because they wanted to add some features to Spider. And, um, and uh, if, if, I, if it were not for Ralph and, uh, and, uh, and especially the concept that he developed that is called a community working orders, we, we, have, we hadn't been able or at least I haven't been able to, to accept those contributions because I'm, I'm not an accountant or a legal person and, and especially trying to deal with those things from Colombia and, and receiving those funds from the outset is very, very hard. So Ralph, if you want to, or audience to, to tell us a little bit more about this, this concept of a community work in order would be great. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so there's, there's in general this mismatch between uh, how companies work and how open source communities work. In particular, like open source communities that are completely driven by volunteers, right? Because typically all they have at the beginning is, you know, a bunch of people that come together and they have a GitHub repo that they collaborate in and they have a website and that's typically about it, right? So if, you if you're a company and, you know, say you want to use spider or extend spider and you know you you need something right you your first instinct as a company is not like you know let's go and open an issue on the issue tracker right? that's that's not how companies are used to working with so you know they you know what they would like to do is pick up the phone and uh, talk to the person in charge but you know there might not even be one person in charge so for spider there is that's that's you but uh, that that might not be even be findable Right, and then um, the more the more sticky part of the you know once they find that person to talk to is even um, the way companies go about doing business is typically like you know they want to sign a piece of paper with hard guarantees about what's going to happen exactly when, right? and it doesn't quite match with how open source works, right? First of all, you know there's you know there's so much going on, there's so many users that all want you know a different thing, so. It's hard to put things on a on a timeline, especially if you're you know you're a team of volunteers, and more importantly, like it's very hard to say like, hey, you know, you pay me for this feature, and I'm going to push this feature in. Like you know, you there's this consensus-driven project, um, you know, process 
where you know if someone proposes a feature basically anyone who had a github account is is you know free to comment on it so usually there's there's some you know lively discussion about bigger features um and it may turn out that you know it's not a good idea or it ends up being different so the community work order is kind of trying to find this balance so there is a, a piece of paper that you know companies can get past their purchasing departments and it kind of gives them some guarantees about at, at least the best effort but it also makes them understand you know how these communities work and because at Quantside, we have a lot of experience with both, you know, working with communities and working with companies. Uh, we kind of very well placed to kind of facilitate those conversations and make sure that, you know, in the end, this works for everyone uh, and, and companies can somehow, you know, achieve the goals that they're interested in, in a way that respect the community processes, because those, you know, have to take priority. If the community in the end, doesn't want something or feels like they're forced to do something, that's never a good thing. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's it's especially difficult to, I mean, to accept uh, these contracts from, from companies um, that are willing to respect the the way that open source is developed. And especially that we, we not also have to focus on the features that they want to see for example, in this case, in, in Spider or the new things that they want to add, but also that are willing to, to let us fix bugs and continue uh, with the maintenance and adding uh, different kinds of features and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So those, uh, I mean, finding that balance is very hard. And as I, I told Ralph, um, when, when we were working to, to sign the, these contracts, um, the, the good thing about Ralph is that he's also a maintainer and he understands very well the process of how open source is developed. Um, before he arrived and, and he became the, the director of Quantsai Labs, I also had some troubles working with the with the other people inside Quantsai that are not familiar with this process because they they uh, they were not really uh, I mean understanding how to talk correctly with these companies. Yeah. And just to mention them, although we have them. We have, I have, or we have uh, told them to you already about them. Uh, they are uh, Kite. So Kite is um, a company that develops uh, a, uh, a, a, it's like um, a product that provides better code completion for IDEs and editors. And it's based on machine learning algorithms. So if, if you don't, um, I mean, if you work too much or a lot with Matplotlib, for example, and there are several comments that are um, used uh, a lot for by a lot of developers, and uh, and Kite finds those comments by scrapping the all GitHub repositories that use a similar code, and then proposes the the entries for the for code completion in in Spider and in several other editors with with those uh, comments that are used the most, and also. Um, it, it provides better documentation. So sometimes um, there are a lot of, of libraries, especially in, in scientific Python, that are not, um, are not so easy to be introspected to get documentation from them, especially because they are developed in, in C++, for example, TensorFlow and PyTorch are developed primarily in C++, uh, but they have uh, Python bindings to them. So it, it, I mean, so users can have a very nice language to work with them, but in the background, they, they use a different language. So those kind of libraries and even NumPy and SciPy work the same. Um, they, they are very difficult to, to get code completion and introspection for them. And Kite um, using these machine learning algorithms can do a much better job than uh, libraries that are developed for pure Python packages like like Jira, which is the other main library that we also use. So that's one company, Kite. And uh, we, I have to say that um, the, the development process with them and, and this community working order work very, very well with them. And uh, the, we have uh, weekly meetings with them. And uh, we, we, we were tracking the progress of, of adding and integrating Kite with the Spider. At the end, they were very happy with the process. Last time that I think Ralph talked with them, they, they told him that they are having like 30,000 
uh, active users that are using at the same time Spider and Kite. So that's really, really nice. Probably and the other company <laughs> that also supported us to finish Spider 4, it's TDK Micronas. So that, that's an affiliate, affiliated company with TDK, but they develop um, microchips for medical equipment. And they also want to, to extend Spider to, to test the microchips in, in a very special way. But fortunately, uh, we, uh, um, well, Tom Horan, the, the person that has been, uh, that, that uh, um, hired us to work uh, in several aspects of the spider that they needed, they also understood, he also uh, understood very well the, the way open source is developed and he has been very supportive from, uh, for a process uh, since, since we, uh, we had this community working order with TDK. Um, I don't know, Ralph, if you want to tell us a little bit more, especially about your work on, on NumPy and SciPy, how that work uh, is going. Well, I, I don't want to detract from, you know, the main, <laughs> the main topic of this, uh, <laughs> know, this but... live conversation, but yeah, I've, I've worked on, on NumPy and SciPy for more than 10 years. And um, actually, well, I'm also a Vim user, so I haven't used Spider to work on NumPy and SciPy a lot, but I've used Spider a lot in my in my day job as well. Uh, so <laughs> I've I've worked for for you know for several years in uh, in a in a semiconductor industry, and you know Spider was was extremely valuable to me there. Um, I didn't know yeah. that you that you use the Spider too. <laughs> you <haven't Yes>. <laughs> uh, yeah, in terms of, I think. You know, the, the working on NumPy and SciPy in a way, it's probably, you know, it's a very different topic, numerical computing or graphical user interfaces. Um, but, you know, the process of maintaining such a heavily used project is, it, it will be very similar. And, you know, when, you know, at some point, it probably doesn't matter anymore if you have like 1 million user or 40 million users. Uh, there is a, there'll be a lot of people sending you a lot of bug reports and feature requests. Um, yeah, so I've been I've been very interested in, in following along with the Spire developer uh, development and, and seeing how new features get introduced. And you know, once in a while, you know, a feature doesn't quite work out, and then there's this avalanche of bugs, and the whole team is is scrambling to get a get a bug fix release out. And it's it's very recognizable, but it's also it's also great to see how it works. Nice, thanks, Ralph. And um, well, we. I'm also glad to, to tell you that um, we are about to sign a new contract with TDK. So they are going to support us for one more year. And uh, yeah, so the whole team uh, will be um, uh, hired by Quansai for, for at least one more year. And uh, right now, most of us are working also on other projects inside Quansai. Uh, that's also very good because, well, I mean, the kind of, of skills that you can acquire with the Spider. Uh, are not so much in demand these days, unfortunately, because Spider is a pure desktop application, and most most applications these days are for the for the web. But still, and that's now that I I mentioned it, that's a very important point about the Spider, and one that I'm, even if it's really hard to maintain, I'm, I'm really happy about it, and that is that we uh, we want to be and we still want to be a desktop application. So the desktop is much richer and provides way more possibilities than, than a web application, um, at least from my point of view. Yeah, um, honestly, I and, don't know uh, that many developers who, uh, who prefer to work in a web application. Yeah, sure. But, but still, I mean, the, the, the good thing about the desktop is that, uh, for example, the integration with the, with the file system and, uh, and and uh, allowing users to work with their data inside their own computers or even in a cluster, but but you have that, that the, the possibilities to have access to your own data and not have to upload it to the web or sharing it with with a cloud service or something, or things like that uh, are are some things that motivate me to keep working in spider, like keep maintaining it, because there are very few products that are similar to to spider or 
I mean, the, the one that that compares very closely with with Spider is our study, and uh, and it is also other than that, popular. The, the other IDEs are not so well oriented to to scientific computing, and that's another thing that also keeps me motivated to keep uh, to maintain Spider during these years. For sure, it uh, it it, ex it Spider occupies this very nice niche. And, you know, it's it's almost the ideal tool for like you know people that are scientists or engineers and you know just want to get their problem done without being distracted by lots of software engineering things that that like a fancier like you know ide with more bells and whistles like kind of almost just bothers people with so it got the right features and not too many features i think yeah that's true too i mean the good thing that most of us, uh, as, as you saw in the presentations, uh, are not software engineers by, by training, is that we, we really care about the way scientists and engineers work. And we try very hard to provide things that, uh, that we know, as also scientists and engineers, that we need to do our work. So for example, I'm, I'm not trying to, to bash other IDEs or a thing like that, but most IDEs are, are focused on professional software developers that need very specific things and a very very specific way, way to, to work. And we as scientists, I mean, our workflow is completely different from them. We usually are exploring libraries and trying to understand how to use specific algorithms. And then we need to try and iterate very quickly in, in in a console, how those algorithms work, then produce some data, analyze that data, and repeat and repeat and repeat. And that's something that we have tried to, to provide to our user community. And uh, it's, some, it's, it's a workflow that, that perhaps is not so easy to adapt to for, for other IDEs. But since we, uh, even Pierre is, is also a physicist by training, so he created this ID with that specific goal in mind. And uh, um, and yep. as when I found it and when I became a maintainer, I tried to 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 keep developing it or 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 main product or ID in in that in that same vein. Yep, I know what you're talking about. I'm a physicist too. There's lots of <laughs> labs <laughs> physicists that you know that by the end found writing software more enjoyable than <laughs> than doing <laughs> physics. That's true. And that, that's also what motivated me to, to start working in Spider because, I mean, uh, my, since my undergrad thesis, I have been developing uh, simulations for, uh, for my work. And, uh, and I think the same happened to Gonzalo. So you, you start to enjoy more the way that you, uh, I mean, you're developing work and, and working with code than your own results of your simulations or things like that. And uh, Fernando is also a physicist. Fernando Perez, the creator of yes. Python and Jupiter, is also a physicist. So yeah, this community <laughs> is filled by, yeah. by physicists. At least this generation, because the new, I mean, hopefully the, the new generation, the ones behind us are, I don't know, probably better trained yeah. in software development though, that, we, that we do. Yes, <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to have a worse formal training than we did. Mine was exactly one course in Pascal. <laughs> Me too. My first programming language was Pascal, and the second one was Mathematica. And I liked Mathematica a lot. But now that I have been working, for example, with Python for several years, I found Mathematica very hard to read. Very, very hard to read. I thought the environment is really nice to work with. But yeah, it's kind of hard. So I don't know, Ralph, if you want to tell us a little bit more, uh, or uh, so you had some other input that you want to talk about? Um, no, I'm I'm happy to answer uh, to answer questions, but I'm also curious about uh, yeah things that the the rest of the Spider team have to say. It's the first time I'm meeting some of them, so yeah, I, I'm enjoying this event. <laughs> nice, Juanita. Do you do you have some uh, more questions for Ralph? Um, well, I, well, yeah, maybe, um, would you care to answer this question? Cause I saw one of the, our users, um, 
was asking something. So maybe it says, for someone who wants to contribute to the project, knowledge in which technologies, libraries, platforms are preferred. So what would you, like, what would be your intake uh, on that? Maybe not only on Spider, but maybe uh, uh, on any open source project you can think of. So what would be preferred, but not in terms of specific technologies? <laughs> Yeah, like like um, what libraries and platforms? Um, I guess I guess uh, he's asking, yeah, um, like what libraries and, and technologies are like are preferred for us that we like contribute to to the open source projects. Um, Ooh, okay, I'm gonna have to interpret that question a little bit. I think. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you certainly certainly just interpret it the way you want. It's okay. Yep. Um, so I, I typically encourage people to, well, first of all, contribute to the project that they use and find interesting. Um, you know, don't, don't just pick a random project because it seems like, you know, it's a, it's a trendy project. It seems like it's something that, that you personally are enjoying interacting with. Um, then I also typically tell people to look at, at kind of the, the governance of the project and prefer to contribute to community-driven projects. Um, so if you look at that spider, it has a, it has a very healthy community uh, with developers and, and contributors from all over the world. And it's not, it's not like a, a corporate open source project that just you know, has the open source license that you want uh, but not the diversity in terms of uh, people and, and locations and, and stories in life. Um, and then I guess it, you know, some people contribute just to, because they want to help some because they want to learn something. Um, they're all valid motivations. So, so I think pick, pick what you enjoy. <laughs> Okay, um, I would like also the opinion of our volunteer developers for this question. So Brian and Cam, do you have any um, opinions on this question? Brian, Cam. <laughs> Hi, um, I saw the question. This is a question from uh, Christian, um, I think. The question is, hey guys, great work on spiders, fantastic. Quick question, for someone who wants to contribute to the project, I guess spider, uh, knowledge in which technologies, i.e. libraries, platforms are preferred? Um, going back to one of the things I said earlier, the uh, great thing about spider is it's basically what you're already using in spider. Uh, you could develop spider inside spider. Uh, so it's, it's written in Python. Um, it's using the, the, the Qt, Qt, uh, toolkit, um, which is a, a great way to learn to get into uh, GUI programming. Um, and uh, I mean, that's why it's so easy to get into for, for lots of people is because as a user, you kind of know <laughs> the coding that you need to know to get in to contribute for the first time. Uh, the real big hurdles uh, for lots of people are getting into the, the GitHub um, workflow, um, but there's some really good guides on the, on the spider uh, wiki to help through that uh, to be able to get the project um, see if your your code your new code works and to be able to finally submit that uh, pull request so that we can get it looked at and reviewed uh, it's 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 pretty great for that because the whole thing is is written in in python so okay thank you brian um come do you have anything to add um maybe to yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, I think uh, I think Brian really covered it, everything that I would have said. Um, the great thing about Spider is it's 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 not only for Python, but it's in Python, and you know, again, like you're already familiar with most of the non-GUI parts of it. It's just the Python you know and love, and and then of course, uh, Spider relies heavily on the the rest of the SciPy stack, the PyData stack, you know, SciPy, NumPy, Matplotlib, uh, Pandas, and if you're familiar with those libraries, um, which is likely what you're already using in your work, then you can help with Spider. Um, the, the GUI stuff is probably, uh, for me as a volunteer developer coming in, um, that was the, that took the most learning and then the unit testing. 
Um, but uh, you know, but, uh, unit testing your code with PyTest, especially if you want reproducible research results, is a great idea. So the experience I got with Spider actually helped me write way better um, research code uh, as well. Um, and uh, you know, not only with the unit testing and with the GUI stuff, but also just structuring, you know, structuring a large project, you know, designing classes and APIs and functions and uh, modules, and that gave me a huge boost to my own work and is what really enables what I'm doing right now and um, building a, a large machine learning system and building a, an, a, an IoT framework for scientific sensors. So um, I, I really got to credit Sparta with that. But, uh, so aside, but aside from the GUI stuff, it's what you're already used to. So just jump right in, find some bugs. I mean, when I got started, I had never, I had hardly had any experience in Python, but I was able to learn quickly thanks to the Spider team being very helpful and thanks to the code base being what I was already you know, learning a, with my day job. So that's all I really have to add. I think, uh, I think Brian covered it really well. Good question. Um, thank you, Cam. Um, okay, so we have another question from, um, wait, from Mario Ale Nikos. Sorry, I can't say your last name. So he says, greetings from Ciudad del Carmen, Mexico. It would be great to see inline plots being fully interactive, like picking and moving lines from a line plot, dynamic zooming, or see pre-installed modules for, with GUI for machine learning and science in general, like MATLAB. I think that will be the real end of MATLAB. My question is, um, it will be a possibility to add these functionalities to Spider, and what can we do as a community to help you? Okay, so I think first uh, we should add as the first question. So. Maybe Carlos can help us with this. Yeah, so, but that's something that is not very well understood uh, in Spider. I mean, it's kind of hard to understand that uh, there are different ways to generate plots inside of Spider. So the default way is uh, inline plots. And especially in Spider 4, we, since we have this plots pane that is very useful to collect that, to collect all plots that you, you are generating in the session, um, we we have that that option by default. But if you if you go to to our preferences uh, window and go to the IPython console uh, up, uh, entry and then graphics, you can select um, a different backend. So the the thing is that Matplotlib, which is the library that most uh, scientific uh, users in Python used to generate plots has different backends. So backends means different ways to, to generate your plots. And uh, one of them is inline, and the other it's called, um, well, we call it in our preferences automatic, but it really depends on the graphical tool, toolkit that you use to generate plots. So if you go to, to that entry that, well, we will, we will put it in, in, the, in the video link for what, later on, so you don't have to remember it. And you can select a different backend. And if you select automatic, then plots will be generated in a new window uh, in, the, in the same way as they are generated in MATLAB. And then you, 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 will, you will have the possibility to, to zoom them, to pan them, and, and, to, and to work interactively with them. So yeah, we, we already provide that possibility, but you have to, to, to change the backend. So right now, since that option is kind of hidden, it's not so easy to find it, uh, we're thinking to add it to the, to the options menu of the plots pane. So each, each pane has uh, an options menu, which is like the, the three bars or what is called uh, the hamburger menu uh, in the top uh, right corner. So if you go there in the plots menu in a future version, hopefully in a month or so, we will add an option that will allow you to control if you want to, to have your plots inline or, or automatic. And in the case of or automatic, then they will be generated in a new window and it will be easier to switch among the two options. That's, I mean, that's the kind of things that we find out when we, we receive feedback from, from users. And uh, thanks a lot for, for your feedback. We will, we will add that option for sure because I think many people don't know about this functionality. Thank you. Um, okay, so there, there was another question there, and it's what can the community do to help? So maybe Danielle and Gonzalo are, are not <laughs> on screen. Maybe they can answer the question. 
Hi, so sure, like uh, one common misconception we have with open source is that uh, the only way you can help is, is by writing code. So if you don't write code, you cannot help the community or a project. And that's something that uh, as, as developers of open source packages and maintainers, uh, we constantly have to reiterate that there is a whole world of possibilities in, in open source, how you can provide some help. So uh, documentation is one of them. So probably uh, since most of the core developers are really busy trying to develop new features and fixing bugs, we tend to leave uh, documentation lag a bit behind. So this is a place where a lot of users can, can help a lot, either by writing tutorials, improving documentation that is no longer accurate, or even translating uh, documentation to a, to a new language. And on that aspect, uh, Spider right now has, oh, cat, <laughs> Spider right now has, uh, has, uh, has the projects set up on crowding, which is a platform that allows us to uh, provide a web interface to easily translate all the Spider interface uh, strings into any language that we want to provide. Uh, right now we have different languages. Uh, we have a uh, spider translated to Chinese, Spanish, French, uh, German, Japanese. We have incomplete translation for, for Polish, Persian, uh, what else, Russian, and I don't know, we have some more. So, so that's like a really uh, important aspect of spider is that we're trying to offer it in your native language. We know that although most of the documentation for scientific computing for programming is found in English, uh, sometimes it helps that the thing that you're using is in your, in your native language. So, so that's one way to help uh, contributing to documentation, contributing to translations. Um, that's always, uh, uh, a nice way of helping. Uh, also, as Cam said before, uh, one way that you can also help us a lot is is providing feedback for users in the channels we use for interaction with them. So we have a channel on Gitter that is uh, sometimes we are not as readily available as we would like to to answer uh, user questions. But if you are eager, motivated user of Spider and you want to help us and help the community, you can join the Gitter channel. You can use your Twitter credentials or your GitHub credentials, I believe. And you can help us by answering questions and helping uh, other users that probably have some issues that at some point you were facing. So that's actually one, that would be a massive contribution to, to the team and something that does not require an expertise in specifically uh, in coding. So that's something uh, I really want to, to reiterate is, is coding is just one part of, of the project. And there is a lot of things that, that we need help with. So, so even uh, like Juanita, Juanita is helping us doing all the, the social management of Spider in all the different uh, points of communication we have with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But even then, if anyone was willing to give us a hand with that, with ideas or, or projects, that would also help us uh, have a bigger outreach in the community of users and developers. So I think that's, that is, uh, let's say, a low hanging fruit for anyone who wants to start contributing and is not a native English speaker, is just help us translate, help us with the documentation, help us with tutorials. So that, that would be my, my advice to you. Thank you, Gonzalo. Um, Danielle, is there anything you would like to add to the question? I think Gonzalo did like a very uh, good uh, answer to that. Also, maybe I could add like uh, when you face like an issue or 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 maybe you have an idea of something that could be nice to have, you can basically like write the, um, an issue in the in GitHub in our repository, in our uh, issue tracker to, to share that, that idea and, and see if it's, if it's worth it of, of, 
take the time to work on it. Uh, I think uh, giving feedback at, 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 uh, at it is, uh, is nice too, and could help us to like improve the project and, and see where the community needs more elements or features to, to keep using a spider and uh, making a spider be more useful for them. Um, yeah, basically. Thank you. Um, okay, so Cam was telling me that he, he has something to add, so um, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Juanita. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think Gonzalo covered it uh, covered it pretty well um, and mentioned some, uh, some things. But again, like I again, when I got started, I was just starting to really learn Python, and uh, I hadn't contributed a line of code. Um, but I uh, I had help. I was just just got started helping other users on the issue tracker, answering common questions. So we'd see the same question again and again, and so there were so many issues, and it was hard to find exactly. Um, uh, for users, exactly. Oh, it's this issue, you do this, that issue, you do that. Um, so I helped a lot with that aspect before I even really touched a line of code with Spider. And I mean, that's that's that itself was like almost like a full time job. I don't know how Carlos does it, but I'm um, doing that and all the other stuff he does for Spider. But um, but yeah, and of course I helped, uh, helped a lot with the code. But um, you know, I was still learning a lot about Python and, and that. And I did. And there was uh, so many other things besides the just the code that, that I helped with and others helped with. Um, uh, I mean, you know, you can help write grants and get funding for Spider. If you're, if say you're in a research group and they use Spider for a project, well, sometimes you can actually get uh, grant funding, help support the projects that make your work possible. Um, you can uh, do, um, yeah, I mean, translations are a big one. Our docs are, are still are all in English, so it's, you know, it'd be great to translate those in the future. Um, there's, um, you know, we, we have all, um, um, you know, again, like, like videos again, it's not cover that pretty well, but there's, uh, it felt like even not even half of what I was doing was, but you can also contribute a blog post, um, to our blog. Uh, if you, if you want to share a way in which you used uh, spider in, um, in, uh, in, in a really cool way to make a really cool project, or you, you want to write a plugin, you can also write plugins for spider because they're, they're working on the, the plugin architecture right now. So there's, there's so many, there's so many cool ways to contribute. Um, also I wanted to add that there is a spider actually has, and you guys can, um, you, you can follow up more with the, the spider team about that, but they, um, we actually have an open collective. You can help us uh, support, um, spiders efforts, kind of like a crowdfunding thing. And uh, that'll help uh, fund more Spider developers and fund more Spider features. And a lot of the features in Spider 4 were funded in part through the money uh, from the Open Collective. So we really appreciate the community giving back to Spider. Uh, and it's it's just such a cool thing to see everyone coming together and building a free IDE that helps you know hundreds of thousands of people around the world, um, and all free and open source. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gum. Um... Okay, so while we get more questions from users, I have a question for you guys. Um, so what's um, some real cool real, blah, sorry, <laughs> what cool real world scientific project does each of us work on with Spire? So I would like um, maybe two or three of you to tell me what cool projects do you do like using Spire? Cause I'm guessing you don't only work with Spire, like on Spire, but we, you work on Spire. So um, maybe Ralph can start. Because I, I, I think he has a pretty good answer for that. Oh, yeah. So uh, the last project I used uh, Spider on was uh, when I worked at a, at a company called ASML. Um, and the, we're working on lithography machines. So in, you know, that's a bit of a, a niche term maybe for some people. So to say it simply, they're basically the machines with which you print computer chips. So there are these massive machines like, you know, cost maybe on the order of $50 million. So if Intel builds a new fab and they want to, you know, make the next generation of CPUs with 10 nanometer technology instead of 14 nanometer technology, that's the machine they would use. Uh, so I would, I would actually have, you know, prototype things, you know, for those next generation machines. Uh, and part of that would be in Spider. Um, okay, um, maybe Brian or Cam can tell us about the cool projects they do on Spider. Sure, yeah, I, uh, I work in a research group, so we do write a lot of papers. I do a lot of the data analysis, so working with um, uh, block copolymers and uh, batteries and solar cells. Uh, lots of the figures in our papers are made in Spider using Matplotlib. Um, I've made 
giant, huge video overlays of uh, angles of different BCP dots uh, for a few of my papers with millions of dots uh, using up all my RAM. <laughs> uh, but I also do some, uh, you say, like lab automation, I guess. Uh, so I've made um, actual equipment in the lab run on Python using Spider um, as the IDE for it. They're self-running uh, applications, but I developed them all in Spider. Uh, so just lab automation, uh, automating data analysis, uh, lots of the things that you need to run. So I have all the grad students using uh, scripts that I write in Spider to download their data automatically and plot the different data in the different way that they want. Uh, recently, we've started using some of the machine learning backends to uh, put together uh, future experiments for us as well, which is a pretty cool thing to do. So with solar cells, there's so many different ways you can put them together and so many variables. Uh, we're using Spider to kind of plan and decide where those next experiments are going to be, just to plot out uh, the actual landscape of um, the experiment. Rather than just looking at a line, we'll have this whole color map of exactly where uh, we need to go with our different parameters and we'll be able to pick and see where we want to go rather than just, you know, doing all the experiments or doing oh, one line of experiments and forgetting about a whole other dimension. We can see more of the data that way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, well, so I wanted us to maybe tell a little bit more about ourselves and like where do we work from? Because I know um, you can I mean, also Juanita talk about your project in, in Spider. My project in Spider. Well, thing is, I, I I don't really have a project in Spider, but I do use Spider a lot because I I am currently. No, no, no. Do you mean the, when you started with Spider? When I started with Spider, what do you mean? I mean, the, I mean, I thought when we you were started to the work with Spider, uh, you did your undergrad thesis with it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's actually how I kind of uh, met Spider. So um, I, I, well, I, I went to uh, uh, Python bootcamp um, and Carlos was, was the leading it. So I, I met Spider at that bootcamp because he was telling it everything about um, Python, I guess. And we were using Spider and it kind of, I kind of liked it a lot. A lot. And then um, as a math, um, students, I started working on my undergrad thesis, but um, it was most of it like programming stuff. And I, I, I was doing a lot of algorithms uh, for like compressing, com compressing data. And I found uh, Spider um, really useful for like um, managing variables and data and plotting. And yeah, um, that's, that's how I kind of got in love with Spider at first, because um, I found it very useful for, for my for my undergrad thesis when I was working on it. Um, and nowadays I still use it a lot because I'm doing another undergrad um, and applied mathematics and computer science and, and all my projects and all my um, stuff I, I, that are in Python, of course, I, I work um, in Spider, which I find very useful now still. Um, okay, so what was, I, I forgot what I was gonna ask. Oh, okay, yeah, so I wanted us to, I would oh, like you were to say something? answer uh, the question of who is the, the user? It's from Mario. From Mario. So okay. Mario uh, rephrased uh, his question and uh, he says, uh, sorry, I tried to say if it will be a possibility to add full interactive plots using any backend in the plus tab, the one beside the variable explorer tab, instead of appearing out of the main window like in other IDs. So yeah, Mario, we are exploring how to do that at the moment. The thing is that plus, plots don't look very well. I mean, if you generate them in, in an interactive MATLAB backend and then try to embed it, embed them in the plots pane, they don't look very well. That's the, the issue that we are having. So they look very different from when, when, try, when we try to embed them. And that's, um, yeah, probably we are not going to do that because the, 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 um, the output of the plots, it's kind of jacked, uh, and uh, the, the, the access and the, the, <clears throat> the text in the access 
and the legends and things like that uh, overlap each other when we try to do that. Uh, we haven't found a good way to do it. So probably we're not going to do it. But on the, on the good side is that we plan to add a new pane called viewer that is very similar to, to a concept, uh, to a pane that uh, appears in our studio. And we, in, within that pane, you will be able to see interactive plots generated by libraries that have JavaScript output, output like Bokeh, Altair, um, and uh, several others that, that provide only uh, output for, for JavaScript or to be rendered in, in the Jupyter Notebook. So that's our plan for Spider 5, and that's uh, already funded. So, uh, I mean, probably at the end of this year or at the beginning of, of the new, uh, the, of 2021, you will be able to see that, that pain working. And it will be really, really, really useful. And especially because these uh, JavaScript libraries are way more powerful, powerful than you, that the things that you can find in, uh, in, uh, in Matplotlib. But also the good thing is that Matplotlib has a backend that works in the notebook that's called Matplotlib widget. So you will be able to see Matplotlib plots generated, uh, interactive plots inside that new pane. So yeah. That's, that's my answer. So go ahead, Juanita. Thank you. Um, I was just gonna say that it would be interesting to to tell um, our users like um, where are we from and like where are we working from? Because um, I mean, one of the coolest things of doing open source is that we can do that from um, all the parts of the world. So I, I would like each other to of like tell us um, like where are you from and where do you work from and maybe what other stuff do you do besides uh, working so I, I mean i know most of you have already said that but um just like real shirts so um anyone wants to start or should i start <laughs> okay i'll start <laughs> so well i'm from colombia and i do work from colombia um as most of the team and i apart from working um on spider i am doing another undergrad on applied mathematics and computer science as, as i told you Okay, I'll go next. Next. So I'm also from Colombia. Um, I'm working also uh, from Colombia right now, and I'm trying to finish a PhD in industrial engineering, as I told you. Besides my my job as spider maintainer. All right, I'll go. I'm working from the Netherlands. Um, besides, well, I'm working from home right now. Um, like most of the world, I guess, I get to go out for a walk or a bike ride once in a while. Um, and if I get the code, I mostly work on NumPy, SciPy, PyTorch, and PyWavelets. Okay, I'll go next. So um, I'm also working from Colombia, and Colombia. I'm working from Colombia and working at home. There's my doggy to prove that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ryan, Cam? Yeah, hey, I'm uh, just uh, well, working from home. <laughs> As I said, I usually work up at the university. Uh, but yeah, I'm from Edmonton, uh, Alberta, Canada. Uh, so that's uh, been working here for a while since I graduated. And uh, yeah, that's uh, the snow melted uh, last week. So it's good here, yeah. I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, from the U.S. Uh, in the U.S. in Huntsville in Rocket City, Huntsville, Alabama. I'm working here as a NASA-funded researcher on various machine learning and IoT projects. Um, as an atmospheric scientist, not actually as a programmer, but I've learned so much in spider angle. It's just kind of dual hat. Um, and uh, and uh, originally from D.C. and uh, but it's just so cool to see people from all around the world uh, using spider and working with spider. So. <clears throat> Um, okay, in my case, I am from Colombia too, uh, from Bogota. Uh, I am working too from Bogota. Uh, and uh, I'm also a teaching assistant for a master course in, in, uh, in the University, Universidad de los Andes here in Bogota. 
Uh, also, I am a master student uh, of uh, software engineering, master a uh, master of um, software engineering. Um, and yeah, also I am working like with my university, kind of in, a, in an implementation of a MOOC with Coursera uh, for an online degree related with software engineering. Yeah. Oh, and so something quick to add is that um, is that I actually I also for some flavor I actually also um, uh, developed this open source collective of or not open well it is open source this collective of folks that uh, it gets um, visitors from all around the world out on a bunch of boats to be rocket launches in Cape Canaveral, uh, Florida, and I actually ended up using the core um, theme that Danielle built for the Spider website for our. Uh, for our Starfleet Tours website, um, because in, our whole system is all open source, all reservation system, and uh, that actually was super helpful in in that experience as well. So it's cool how those two totally unrelated things, rockets and spiders, can can cross pollinate. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you can also like do like uh, an improvement, a lot of improvements to that like a team in director, I think it was. Yeah, we're waiting for yeah. your poor... Yeah, a bunch of other people are using it too for their websites now. Really nice. Cool. Um, okay, so we have another um, questions from question from our users. Um, so he says, hi guys, amazing job you're doing. How are, I guess it's, how are you using applied mathematics in development of Spider? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I would I would try to rephrase it um, as a what kind of things regarding applied mathematics can we do with Spider? Um, and well, I'll I'll try answering first because um, I'm the applied mathematics student. <laughs> um, so um, I'll say first off, it's very useful for maybe data analysis and machine learning. I we 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 did a workshop with Carlos um, a couple of months ago in an university um, kind of trying to introduce a little bit of um, machine learning and data analysis um, using plots and using functions. And um, I think it's just like really useful to, to, to have all the pains available to, to explore and interact differently with them because you can have your, your plots um, for like doing graphs or your, of your data, but you can also kind of calculate a bunch of things um, like intro, um, introducing functions in, in your code and kind of separating your code um, on functions. And um, well, that, that would be um, sort of my idea and that, that's uh, what I would like use it for. Um, as I told you, I, I also did my, my undergrad thesis um, using Spider because it allowed me to um, kind of test different things um, like related to data, kind of plot images, um, have plots and analyze different stuff um, using the variable explorer. And yeah, I, I think it's just like a great interaction to have the editor, the variable explorer, and the plots being um, available to, to, to interact differently with, you, with, your, with your code. But maybe Carlos can add a little bit more. Yeah, so <clears throat> the thing is that we, I mean, since oh, my video uh, died for, for a minute, so since we, um, we are scientists or engineers, and um, we, I mean, we try to design workflows in Spider that um, are adapted to the way that we work. So that's what I was saying before. And uh, so many, many professional IDEs are, are focused on a different, very different uh, audience. So instead, what we try to do is to use our experience working uh, as, uh, I mean, to, to, to develop some code, to publish a figure, as Brian was saying, or to do some data analysis, a data analysis, as Juanita was saying, to try to understand um, in, the, in the big picture and the high level, how those workflows work, and then try to put them in a spider. So for example, um, something that uh, I think only spider has is that we, we, we provide several um, ways of evaluate code. So one way is using, uh, is evaluating the entire file. Another way is evaluating just sections of the file. So you can uh, evaluate, I mean, you can create cells uh, in the editor as that work in the very similar way as cells in MATLAB. 
So you can break your file by introducing comments of the form, just uh, uh, two um, percentage signs. And then you, your file will be broken up and then you can evaluate each, uh, each section separately. You can also evaluate a file um, outside um, Spider in, in a different process. In case that, for example, our IPython console has several um, additions that allow uh, our users to work better in, in Spider. But sometimes you, you also have, want to be sure that your code works within a spider and out, out, outside a spider. And for that case, we also provide that functionality. And finally, we, we allow users to, to evaluate each file in a separate console. So that's what we call um, um, dedicated consoles. So if, if you go to, to the run, run configuration profile menu, you can select an option and evaluate your code in, uh, I mean, each file in a separate console. And the good thing is that variables, that's something also that perhaps not many people know about it, but um, you, I mean, if you have a dedicated console per file, then the variable explorer will be updated to show only the variables for that console. And also uh, the plots pane will be updated to show the plots only of that console. So that's really, really useful uh, when you want to work uh, with uh, several scripts or several files at the same time. And uh, that's something that uh, as far as I know, only Spider provides because the other, other IDEs only give you one console. And that's, you have to do all your development with one console. And uh, uh, Pierre, when, when he integrated the IPython console inside the Spider, he really wanted to have several consoles. And I found that also very, very useful to, to, to have because you can be experimenting with several things at the same time and, and look at your variables separately and things like that. Okay, um, thank you, Carlos, for, for your answer. Is there any, um, any other want to add something to applied mathematics on Spider? Um, no? Okay, um, I'll go with our next question from um, Armin Maleki. So he says, hello guys, I don't know if my question is related or not. <laughs> Do you have any ambitions for an enhanced graphical backend that is integrated with Matplotlib and uses GPU. So, I don't know, maybe Gonzalo or Carlos or <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Actually, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is there some work on Matplotlib to to use GPUs right now at the moment? I don't know if that's that's the case, Rob. Are you aware of that? So I'm pretty sure that's out of scope for Matplotlib. Um, but of course, you could use something like Data Shader um, that integrates with, uh, with the likes of Bokeh and Holoviz. And that would work with the next version of Spider with that interactive plotting that uh, Carlos talked about. Yeah, exactly. That's, I mean, the thing is that, uh, I mean, uh, Many people think that, um, I mean, we develop each project uh, in a very integrated way. So perhaps, I mean, that's what it looks from the outside, but from the inside, it, it, each project is developed separately. So for example, we don't, we don't uh, develop and we don't contribute directly to Matplotlib. We integrate with Matplotlib by providing this plot pain and things like that, but we, we don't create things for Matplotlib. But as Ralph was saying, there are other projects like Data Shader that use the GPU to render a plot, not directly Matplotlib plots, but interactive, interactive plots that right now only work in, in the Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab. But uh, in the next version of Spider, they will also be uh, um, shown inside the Spider. So if you create those plots, with this uh, data shader library or others like, well, I mean, there are other libraries I don't remember at the moment that have the, the same functionality using the GPU to render. And also to the, the nice thing about those libraries is that the, the plot is not a static. So you can zoom in and zoom out and um, inside the plot and they have 
you can have millions of points in the plot and the rendering is really, really fast. So right now, it's not possible to show those plots in Spider, but as I, as I was telling you, in the next version, that will be possible. That will be possible. Thank you, Carlos. Um, okay, so um, I'll ask a question to you while we get more questions from our users. Um, so what is your greatest motivation to work on Spider? Um, so maybe Brian can start now. My greatest motivation, uh, yeah. Well, I uh, I really just like the working on the the user experience. Um, so there was a while there where I was just like coding in Python, and other people in the group were using other programs, um, whether they were you know costing lots of money or not, and it didn't really matter to them. Uh, but I was kind of like always you know pushing the 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 uh, the spider IDE and you know and I get a lot of feedback from people who use it in my group and things like that so it's kind of exciting to be able to take some of their ideas or things that I'd never really thought about and try to integrate that um, because like they'll say like well why doesn't it just do this or why doesn't it just do that or I wanted it to do this but it was really hard uh, just things that you don't always think about and then trying to like figure out how that you could get the system to work better in a more smooth way for the user just to be able to get more work done with the tool. Thank you. Um, OK, Danielle, I'll, I would like to hear um, your answer on this. Yeah, well, I will, will say that helping, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I, I, I like help. I like to help. Yeah, that's that's basically also maybe this uh, when you book fix or something, you kind of try to to find why this is happening. So if I can and and this process of uh, acknowledgement of uh, what is happening and all the like uh, flow of why is happening, how you can fix it and stuff is really interesting for me. Uh, if I can do that and also help someone that is facing like something like this issue or or this um, uh, problem that is maybe even uh, being a problem that uh, stops their, their work or or can, how can I say that? Like, uh, yeah, at the end, it will make uh, the world of others that are using a spider, uh, like, I don't know, uh, uh, like, um, I will help. Yeah, that's it. I, I mean, I like to help. That's it. No, not, not too much to add to that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Daniel. Okay, maybe Cam, you can answer the question too. Yeah, sure. I mean, I already kind of touched on some of that um, in my previous descriptions, but I mean, but really for me, it comes um, kind of like Daniel said. I, I really enjoy. Uh, well, I, I really enjoy two things. I really enjoy um, uh, contributing features and improvements, especially with the user interface and with the with the user experience to make things easier for users to you know do great science and do great work. Um, and build awesome stuff, and um, the and for me, I mean, I, I could you know I, I enjoy working on my code and my research and doing all that you know cool science, but I also enjoy building tools and platforms and foundations to allow uh, to allow literally hundreds of thousands of scientists, young and old, you know, new and experienced all across the world, uh, to build so much cool stuff, uh, and that to really multiply the impact of what I do. Um, so that's one big thing. That's like the big picture thing, and then kind of the small picture thing, which is where I got started with Spider, and what all was kind of one of the things that really kept me in it was um, was really the directly interacting with users and helping them fix their problems. And I, I love figuring out problems and solving them for people, in 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 being able to you know help make their day a little brighter. But also, um, I, I just really enjoy that direct interaction, that uh, that 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 you know one on one helping people with their with their issues because it's both interesting to me, but also interesting because. It, it really it really helps them so it's yeah it kind of comes back to what what danielle said um 
it's like the big picture uh, helping in the small picture. Thank you. Um, okay, Gonzalo, maybe you want to answer too, or Carlos. Okay, Carlos. <laughs> or, okay, I'll, I'll go while you think about an answer. <laughs> Um, I think what motivates me the most about working um, in Spider, it's, well, as Danielle said, um, helping people to kind of come up with a better tool that is useful for, for them in whatever they, they can use it. And um, also kind of thinking that Spider is, is, is bigger than just, just the software, but it's a community that is connected to uh, bigger communities, um, Jupyter, um, NumPy, SciPy, and um, all the Python community. So thinking that that Spider is, is much bigger than 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 just the software, kind of um, makes me makes me wanna 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 help and make the community grow and kind of be be a little piece of of the improvements of of a huge um, kind of community of people that are all working to 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 develop amazing things so that people can 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 use it. So I I think that's what motivates me the most. Ralph, do you wanna? Um. um i i think i concur what you what you just said um and I, I feel like you know whatever project i work on i often end up doing the things that have a high high impact if they get done but they're kind of too boring so they don't get done a lot of the times <laughs> like uh you know it, it could be like applying for funding it could be you know working on the build system or, you know, improving CI. Um, but in the end, like that, that's what makes this whole ecosystem work better. And, you know, this kind of starting with a few handfuls of, of people and now grows to like hundreds or thousands of, of maintainers and then, you know, tens of millions of users. That's, you know, I've, I've enjoyed seeing that, that whole process and it, it keeps being motivating. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so Carlos, are you going to say something or, or do yeah. we just keep going? No, no, sorry. So what motivates me to, to be working in Spider is really to provide an interface like Spider to, for users to keep doing uh, their scientific um, working, uh, their scientific um, coding development. So. Um, I mean, I don't have the opportunity to use a spider too much in my own work, but in my last paper, I found it really, really useful. I mean, I haven't used it as a user for many years, but still having the possibility of exploring very quickly documentation and running um, my, my files very quickly and exploring a lot and, and going to the Virgo Explorer and things like that, I found it really useful. And, I mean, it, it could sound a bit strange, but I was really grateful, not just for me. I, I mean, probably, yeah, I put a lot of, of my time to maintain a spider, but there have been many contributions uh, throughout the years that haven't done by me. Uh, for example, Brian added the, the run cell command that I found very useful right now. I mean, I'm very grateful uh, with him for adding him, taking the time to add him. And, um, and uh, right now, for example, Juanita and Kam are, are improving our documentation. I found that really useful too. We have found a lot of bugs in the process and we're trying to fix them too. But the effort was really useful. Daniel added the object explorer for the variable explorer. That was also very, very useful uh, in my work. And, uh, and Gonzalo also, for example, improved a lot the way that we show lint uh, linting messages the warning and error messages that we show in the editor and the way that co the code completion widget works, that has been a fantastic work. And all of those pieces together it makes the experience, in, um, the, the, the experience of working with a spider really, really nice. I mean, I know that we have received many, many bugs also uh, during the last couple of months, about 800 bucks. That's huge for a project of our size. But uh, that also shows us that um, people really want an environment like Spider. I mean, and that's something that uh, at the moment there are, I mean, uh, we, there are very few, few projects that are um, looking in the same direction. 
And uh, yeah, I'm really happy to, to keep working on it and to, to, to try to give you, uh, the users, something that works like Spider and that allows you to, to mix a lot of things and to explore your data and to make plots and all of those things. So yeah, even if it costs, it costs a lot of my time uh, because answering, answering issue reports is not the, the nicest thing in the world. But still, that that vision and the the um, I mean, trying to to create something like Spider and, and to 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 see that users really want something like that is what keeps me motivated. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so I'll make just two more questions before before wrapping up. Um, if you users have some more questions just this is the time to write them because we're going to be done soon so my question for you is what would you say spider greatest strength um and i mean as an ide not not as a community but but as an ide like what would you say it's spider greatest strength you can start Juanita, with this one <laughs> Um, well, I think it's very flexible. So the fact that you can choose which paints to work with and that you have so many things available um, to do your, your work, I think that's, that's um, the thing that I see as, as its greatest strength for me. Um, because there, there's some times that I would like to use Spider just for like, I don't know, maybe doing a simple code and I can just use the editor on the console. There are some other more complicated projects that would need me to uh, work with other paints. And I, I think having that flexibility between, um, yeah, choosing which paints to, to work with and um, kind of having all the tools available in the same IDE, it's, it's the, the biggest strength, I guess, for me. Mm, I would like to know Brian's opinion also about this. Yeah, um, code cells. I really like code cells. <laughs> um, from a user perspective, just the way I use it, different from uh, someone who's writing software or, or you know, professional uh, software designer. Um, I'm writing code that I'm going to use once. I'm going to get it to be repeatable, and I'm going to get it to do my data analysis that I need. Uh, but I need that interactivity. Uh, so I really like to be able to have the choice to run all of my code or run part of my code or use uh, some data that I pre-generated to actually then later on plot. So my my whole code is, is pretty long and it's all set up in hierarchies that all make my different figures. Uh, so I can run my data analysis at the top and then I can run a cell that just makes figures. Um, and it's just a really dynamic way to be able to do all of that sort of live inside an environment uh, that really lets me uh, just sort of explore more than uh, just programming. Thank you, Brian. Um, okay, maybe Daniela can. Mm, in my case, I think. I would say that that you can kind of have a simple like editor and that's it. Even if you don't want anything, you can have you can have like a, a error or syntax highlighting and you are good to go. Yeah, most of the time is the way I I use a spider when I am developing a spider. Uh, and also, I think for more like data or data science related things, probably the Bible Explorer is like this, like the, the main, uh, uh, like plot, um, pain you can, you can have that actually enables you to, uh, see the data you are working on. And yeah, basically, that's it. Um, Cam? Yeah, I would say um, something that, and also something I heard from a lot of our users interacting with them, I would say Spider's biggest kind of killer feature, at least in the past, has been the, the variable explorer. Um, 
being able to interactively uh, introspect not only the built-in Python types, not only uh, data frames and uh, and arrays and um, and uh, series and all and all the other types of supports, but also introspect uh, custom classes as well. So they say you have some custom class that uh, that uh, that encapsulates the data for your particular research, you can actually introspect that and figure out what's going on. Uh, and even functions and modules and anything in Python you can introspect with, especially with the new Object Explorer uh, feature added to Sparta 4. Um, and, and so that, that gives sci scientists so many powerful tools to analyze uh, and explore their data interactively without having to write a ton of code and having to remember a lot of matplotlib commands. You can also, you can, you can do, uh, you can trigger histograms and plots and, uh, and actually interactively and not only can you even explore your data, but you can actually manipulate it. You can actually edit your edit your data frames in your in your um, in your arrays, just as if you were say in you know in Excel or LibreOffice um, or in, a, in an interactive data analysis program. You can edit them right right in the Variable Explorer without having to touch a line of code. So it's a it's a super powerful tool. I actually don't use it as much right now because I'm working on some some bigger projects. But it's by far the the the, the biggest thing I've heard users say, and it's really the coolest feature of Spider too. I think. Um, okay, Ralph, do you have any um, input on what's Spider's biggest strength? So I think the biggest strength is the, the simplicity and the recognizability of the user interface. So, you know, if I want to develop something in, you know, whether it be Vim or Emacs or, you know, uh, PyCharm with like 10,000 little underlines. So everybody can have their preference, but when you want to show it to, you know, your coworker who doesn't speak Python and isn't a software developer, you know, it's often very valuable to even like load it into, you know, as a demo to load it into Spider. And, you know, it, the, you know, people engage then with the thing you want to tell them rather than be scared by the interface. So I find that incredibly valuable. Um, okay, Gonzalo. We'll end with Carlos because I'm sure Carlos has a <laughs> great thing to say. So something that I really like about Spider, but it's not something that is currently there, and but relates to to the current work I'm doing is is being a Spider written in Python. It should be super easy for users and developers to be able to extend it in a in a simple way. So. So what, uh, and this probably also answers the previous question of what I like or what motivates me the more of working in Spider is, is being able to provide this, this API and this simple way of, for users to easily create a new, a new thing for Spider, be it a new panel that provides any new functionality that is specific to, to some uh, domain. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to, to Spider 5 and all this functionality that will be provided. And hopefully uh, in this process, we'll get more, more users uh, to be able to develop their own plugins to extend Spider capabilities uh, beyond Python. Because at this point, although Spider is, is clearly focused in Python and is written in Python, uh, in the future, we're looking to extend it to provide these facilities for other languages in the scientific space, be it uh, R, Julia, C, uh, Fortran, which is actually getting a bit of a renaissance with this project of, of Fortran Lang website that is trying to gather a community around Fortran. Uh, so I'm really excited about the work that will be done in that direction and, and how I would like to see what users come up with in terms of plugins that enhance their productivity, their workflows, and make their life easier. And in that process, make the life of other users much, much easier. OK, Carlos, your turn. OK, so it's my turn. Um, so I think. The biggest strength of a spider is really, um, and I agree with Juanita, it's integration. So we have gone uh, through great lengths to integrate with a lot of libraries and a lot of 
um, functionality that is provided by several projects. And uh, I think that's something that, uh, I mean, it's really hard to do, really, really hard to do. I mean, uh, for example, the, the first time that we provided the data frame viewer in the Variable Explorer, I mean, during the first month, where I remember that we received three bucks uh, from people saying that they wanted to see data frames with one million rows. And of course, that was a blocking spider, and I had to invest several nights trying to to uh, to improve that uh, that workflow. And uh, and still, that's just one example. Uh, we integrate with the Sphinx for the help pane. We integrate with the with IPython for the IPython console, of course with Matplotlib to provide this, uh, this plot pain and, and the integration with the backend and a lot of other libraries that are not that are not shown in the interface. We integrate with them in the background. We have right now like 20 direct dependencies and more than 100 indirect dependencies. And that's huge for, for a small project like us, like ours. Um, but, uh, but I really like to give users an environment where they don't feel the need to 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 do some to to do their their coding developments in in several tools at the same time. For example, using something to 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 process data and something to plot and something to run it uh, uh, to run their code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's that's I think the spider's uh, biggest strength that it's everything. Everything that that we think you will need as, as scientific coded developers, everything is in one place, or at least we have gone through through great efforts to provide that through great, great lens to provide that. And another thing that um, we haven't had time to write the blog post about, but uh, that came in in Spider Four thanks to Quentin Peter, one of uh, another of our volunteer developers that unfortunately couldn't make it today is the new debugger. So we received a lot of complaints in the past because our debugger was very, very limited and Quentin uh, put a lot of time and effort to, to make it, make it a way a lot better. And right now it works uh, very similarly to MATLAB. Um, so you can create plots, you can evaluate the code, but not just a single line code, but multi-line code in, in the debugger. You can, the debugger is connected, of course, to the variable explorer, so you can also uh, inspect your variables while you're debugging, which is really, really useful. And uh, yeah, all those things are uh, way uh, better in Spider 4. And I think um, that's also a debugger developed for scientists and engineers. So usually debuggers uh, they work by just stopping at a point and showing you the stack trace uh, of the, of of that point and what are the, the things that you probably you would like to inspect. But in the, in the scientific workflow, you want to inspect, for example, why my, dat, my data frame doesn't have this column or why, uh, why the, 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 the data that I want to have at the end of the script is not the same as at this point or is not working correctly at this point. So you can also uh, generate plots at that point. And that's another thing that's really useful. And, and, also, and another thing is that you can evaluate code uh, at that point. So you can not only inspect your validators, but sometimes you also want to, to run a little, a little piece of code to better understand what's happening exactly at that point. So that's a debugger that uh, I think you will be very pleased to use if you, if you uh, uh, give it a chance. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Um, so last question. Um, before we end this live session, uh, I would like um, each one of you, and of course me, <laughs> to give a short advice on someone who wants to start working on open source projects. So really short advice for, for someone to start working on open source. I'll start. <laughs> okay. Um, my advice would be to try without hesitating um, whether if you have enough knowledge or experience uh, for doing it. Just try doing it. Um, start with easy, um, maybe easy issues on any open source projects you like to collaborate. Um, 
and just try doing it without um, thinking that you don't have enough knowledge or experience because uh, that's usually um, not the case. And usually what it takes is just um, wanting to do it and kind of learning about it, but not, not a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge is needed to, to start. I'll, I'll add to that because that's, that's a very good point, Juanita. Um, what I'll, I'll add is that many scientists and engineers who are, you know, most of the spider, spider user base, uh, they, you know, they have a lot of training in, you know, science and engineering. So they know how to, you know, things like constructing bug reports is very methodical. And even, you know, for something you might not understand the code at first, um, you still know about you know, things like statistics or math. And that's equally valuable because there, there are people who are good software developers out there who may you know, not, you know, I do not have the time or the knowledge to you know, wrap their head around a complicated piece of math. So whatever you can do, it's, it's valuable. Yeah, so... Uh... To add to the previous answers, I think uh, one 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 problem that I I guess we see or I have seen with uh, with people trying to to get into open source is that sometimes the packages that they are starting to use are already packages that that probably have a, a there are probably old packages. Let's say that if I want to start contributing as a first timer to NumPy probably the barrier is a bit higher because being such a stable project, the easy issues probably are already covered or have been solved at that point. So one way of contributing to open source would be just try to search for projects that not only interested you, but are, are relatively new or relatively young because in those projects, there is the most possibility of finding uh, easier issues to solve than in more well-established projects. So that will be one suggestion for people. And, and yes, as Juanita said, like, uh, I, I remember let, just an anecdote of how I started. I, I remember the first uh, contribution I made to Spider over five years ago, I guess, around that time. It was a very simple thing. It was like when the cursor uh, moved through the editor, I wanted the number to be highlighted in a different color. Not only not only having like a highlight region, but I wanted the number on the left to be white or dark. And and that was a lot of work to get right until it got merged. But just getting that apparently simple issue and trying to solve it one time and again and again until it was finally merged, it was it was a hard process. I will not deny it. it. It took me a lot of time. I had to learn about Qt and PyQt and how to use a graphical toolkit. That was the first time I was working with that. But I guess you need to be persistent because even if it's hard at the beginning, uh, you will succeed. And there is a whole, uh, one of the strengths of Python in general is that the community is very welcoming and is very friendly and it's eager to help you and see you succeed. So even if it's hard, just keep trying and you'll get there. Yeah, I had a similar experience just, you know, coming from a science engineering background, I took some courses, uh, none of them were on Python, um, but, you know, uh, contributing to open source. I've used open source for a long time, a Linux user for over 15 years, and just being able to see all the contribution from everyone, I just wanted to be able to, to pay it forward. And I saw that this was a good place that needed some help. And it was just interesting to be able to see the uh, uh, I don't even remember what my first <laughs> my first contribution was, uh, but be able to see that added to uh, a project, and I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, I, I did that little thing. You know, <laughs> gives you kind of this uplift uh, to know that you're helping out and that other people all around the world are using that little you know thing that you did. 
Yeah, I mean, um, so for me, that's 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 uh, I think uh, Brian hit the nail on the head for me. But um, and uh, I guess also, so if if you want to get started on a project, working on a project, um, um, so it really depends on your strengths and what you're really interested in doing. Because honestly, it, it can it can be it can be a lot of work. It can be a lot of uh, you know, it's 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 definitely not the uh, it has a lot of rewards, but it's also it also can be a little issue could turn into a huge issue and turn into some big uh, some big project and be a lot of time. But um, you have to find what keeps you going, what really makes you passionate about um, my working with open source. Do you really enjoy helping individual users? Do you do you enjoy uh, working with code? Do you enjoy um, writing documentation or translating into your own language, um, or or helping you know fund a project or helping with the social media? What really um, you know, strikes your passion. What can you motivate yourself to do the FDA and what, what really allows you to get something out of it and not just um, the project thing out of it? Because otherwise you, you will burn out if, if you don't find your niche and find something that you really like. And it's also uh, helps build uh, work to your strengths and help uh, most benefit the project as well in the long term. Um, and that's kind of why I always had to kind of keep finding it. And, and don't be afraid to let those evolve as you learn more about the project as you. Uh, as you grow more and you, you, you understand more and you um, gain more experience, don't, don't be afraid to let that grow and evolve and don't, you know, don't be, af don't be, and, and don't typecast yourself into one particular, oh, I can only do this, I have to do this. And it's, it's hundred percent my responsibility to have to do this all the time. Um, and I know that's something I had to keep constantly uh, working on as well. Um, and I guess the final thing is just, um, is also don't be afraid to, to learn something new though, because, I mean, I learned so much from my experience with Spider. I mean, I started not knowing much about Python, and now I've it's opened it opened so many doors for me um, as a researcher and in many other ways. Uh, so I I can't tell you how the, the long term how possible long term benefits were, but it was because um, and there certainly was a lot of challenges too. But but playing with those strengths and focusing on what what really makes you passionate is what I recommend people getting an open source. Daniel, do you want to add something about this? I mean, I think that <laughs> everything has been said. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I also kind of um, want to emphasize in, the, in the, the motivation, maybe. Like, probably it could be not too easy at the start to, to have like uh, yeah like, like the initial attempt could be kind of uh, difficult maybe but at the end is like trying to 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 offer you like uh, i want to help i i want to help and even if you don't know what you can do probably in the project you you want to to contribute someone will say like like yeah, you can try to do this or that, even if not uh, uh, meaning that to go to the code and do something. But other things like uh, Gonzalo and the others have said, like documentation or or maybe helping uh, with tutorials or, or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Basically, that. Um, yeah, okay, so, I, oh, sorry. sorry. I, <laughs> no, I go ahead, something. go ahead. So, yeah, uh, also something that helps a lot, and, and it's probably uh, obvious to some of us, but I just remember this also is uh, uh, a nice way to contribute to open source is also and try to engage with your local community if it exists, if there's a Python community in your city. So that's one way to get people that have uh, same interests as you probably and maybe some of the people that are part of that community can also give you a hand in getting ramped up in open source. So, so if you are not yet part of a community, just look around if there is some community already created in your city, in your area, in your university, in your department, in your company. And if there is not one and you're motivated enough, just create one. So that's also a great starting point to 
to be able to work in, in open source because at the end of the day, we're just part of a huge community. So, so starting with a small community that locally works or tries to learn more about the language, be it Python or be it something else, it's also a great starting point to, to try to get involved with all these initiatives. Thank you, Gonzalo. Um, okay, so we have one last question. Oh, you want to say something? Yeah, because I haven't said anything about this. <gasps> sorry, so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think I, I agree with Gonzalo. I mean, if, if you um, find the opportunity to, I mean, to contact your Python local community or your Linux local community or things like that, that would be really, really useful. And, um, but also, I mean, we have received several, um, I mean, simply opening an issue and trying to, to, I mean, to interact with us and suggesting an idea, that's also really useful. I mean, the point is that um, most of us are not using Spider to, I mean, uh, in a regular basis, and especially not uh, to do scientific work. So if, if, if you have ideas about how to improve a spider in, in that way, then we're really happy to hear them. In, in my case, for example, since I'm doing a PhD and, and most of my colleagues in, in other engineering areas are using also spider, um, they have um, given me advice to, to add some things or things that are not working well or things that should be improved, and I took those ideas and I have added add them uh, to Spider, added them to Spider. So, for example, the Object Explorer that that Daniel added was, uh, I mean, the the it, that was that one was requested several times in the past, but I didn't find it useful. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, I think it, I mean. I, I thought that it was a lot of a lot of work for very little gain. But then I saw a friend that was using um, a similar project, uh, and it, it, it took him a lot of time to just set up and that program to to use it to use it for his work. But I thought, that, yeah, I, we have to add that because this. I mean, it's really useful. People really need to to have something like that. And and then I I told Daniel about it, and we contact another developer because we didn't just create that project, but we based our work in a previous project and, and things work well and we could add it for Spider 4. So, so another way, what I'm just saying is that another way to, to participate is just suggesting us your ideas and, and the things that you, the, you consider that could be useful to add to Spider and, uh, and yeah, that's, that's also a, a great feedback and a great way to participate in improving Spider. Thank you, Carlos. Um, okay, so one last question before we close, because we, we got last minute questions from AJ Guma. So um, with Python 2 coming to the end of the road, what's the plan ahead of for Spider? Complete shift to Python 3 in the cards? So maybe Gonzalo can help us with this question. Uh, sure, thanks. Uh, thanks, Ajay, for your question. So, so Python 2 and Align has already, it's already there. I think a couple of weeks we have the final and last release for good for that version of, Spy, of Python. Uh, for the Spider uh, code base, we are basically supporting Python 2 and 3 for whatever is left of the four of the Spider 4 version. Uh, and it's starting with Spider 5 to be released sometime next year, early next year, I, I believe. That's going to be Python 3 only. So no Python 2 support will be available for Spider 5. Thank you very much, Gonzalo. Uh, um, I guess we've reached the end of our live session today. Uh, but hopefully we'll have more in the future. So um, I want Carlos to, he wants to uh, make a special invite for, for you. Yeah, so <clears throat> we're going to, to participate in um, a podcast that um, is created also by Kwanzaa. It's called Open Source Directions. And uh, this podcast is going to take place on May the 1st at 11 p.m. Central Time. 
Uh, we will uh, be posting publicity about it in our social media. So just to, for you to be aware right now about it. And in that podcast, in that podcast, we're going to talk about the new features that are coming in Inspire 5. And also we are going to, to take a look more in depth at the work that Juanita has been doing in the documentation project. And also another developer of ours that was not being able to be here today, uh, Stephanie, that she's going to talk about um, her work on Spider Terminal. So you're very welcome to, to attend that podcast. It's going to be very, very interesting, I think. And we're going to, to enter more in the details of what's coming next in a future version and these other projects that I told you about. Great. Um, I'll post um, our information for the podcast and all our social media so you can be all aware of the time and where to watch it and everything. Um, but thanks for the invite, Carlos. Uh, does anyone else um, want to say something before uh, I wrap up everything? No? Oh, we're good. Uh, thanks, thanks for, for coming. And nice to see some of your faces <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so th thank you all for, for joining us. And th thank you um, to all the people that were watching and asking um, us questions. Hopefully we can do this um, soon and we can um, yeah answer more of your questions. Um, feel free to, to text us on our social media if you, if you still have some questions for us. Um, and I mean, yeah, we're a community, this is open source. So um, if you have any requests on any contents you want to see in social media or things we can do to help you, um, yeah, feel free to text us. Um, I'm, I'm on the social media, so you can, you can um, yeah, text me anywhere and I'll try to, to reach out as, as soon as I can. Um, and yeah, thank you all for, for joining us. And yeah, I think that's, bye. Thank you everyone for all attending. Bye-bye. Right. Have a great weekend.